Welcome to today's lecture on simplifying fractions. My name is Drew Collip. In today's lecture, we're going to examine fractions that are the same value, but represented in different formats. We call these equivalent fractions. So equivalent fractions, different ways of representing the same fraction. Let's examine two fractions for now, and we'll examine whether they're equivalent or not. A, two over six, one over three. Are these fractions equivalent? What about B? 1 over 5 and 2 over 20. Are these fractions equivalent? Give these a try right now, pause the video, and use whatever method you would like to try and prove that these fractions are either equivalent or they're not equivalent. The first one is true. 2 over 6 and 1 over 3 represent the same value. They are equivalent fractions. B is false. 1 over 5 and 2 over 20 are not equivalent fractions, meaning they do not represent the same value. I'm not sure what method you used to determine this. Perhaps you just did this in your head. But there are mathematical ways to prove whether a fraction is equivalent or not. There are two methods. The first method is called the cross product. The second method is we just simplify each of the fractions. Let's start with number one. Let's talk about the cross product, the test for equivalent fractions. So the test for equivalence, what we do, step number one, we find the cross product. So we have fraction that looks like this, and we have a fraction, say, that looks like this. We want to know, are those two things equal to each other? So what we do is the cross product. We take the numerator on one, and the denominator on the other, we multiply those together, and we get a number. We then take the numerator on the other one and multiply it by the denominator on the first one. We get another number. If these numbers are equal, same fraction. If they're not equal, they are not the same fraction. They represent different values. Let's try that now with example number 12. So this is what we had earlier, 1 over 5 and 2 over 20, are they equivalent fractions? What we can do is we can write down the fractions. And sometimes, to help represent what's going on here, we'll just draw some arrows here. This tells me I'm going to take the numerator on one, the denominator on the other, I'm going to multiply those together. 1 times 20 equals 20. I'm now going to take the denominator on one and the numerator on the other and multiply those together. 2 times 5, this is equal to 10. These numbers, 20 is not equal to 10, therefore they are not equivalent fractions. Practice questions here? Let's try A. A is what we had up here earlier. Example 11A, that's just practice A. So let's work through that together. We said this was true. Let's see what happens when we get that. We take these two values, 2 times 3 is 6. And we take these two values. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 equals 6. Yes, they are equal. Meaning, these two fractions represent exactly the same value. If you were to write only one answer, though, you would write it as 1 third. Why? Because it is in simplest terms. 2 over 6 can be simplified down. We'll talk about that in a few moments. For now, pause your video and give these a try using this cross product method. Try and determine if these fractions are equivalent or not. This one is true. They are equal. This one is false. These are not the same value. And these ones are also false. They do not represent the same value. Let's see how we got there. 4 and 21 equals 84. 7 times 12 that also equals 84. Therefore, they are equal. 2 over 7, 12 over 21 represent the same value. Let's try the next one now. 3 and 15. 3 times 15, that equals 45. And we have 5 and 6. 5 times 6 equals 30. These values are not equal. They are not the same 
value. Remember that. When we're converting one fraction to another, when we're simplifying it, we're not changing the value of the number, we're just changing how that value is expressed. Last question now. 1377. 1001. 55, 18. You can see these numbers are not the same, therefore they are also not equivalent. Now perhaps some of these, for instance, maybe C, maybe you could do that one in your head. No problem, you can simplify that down. It gets more challenging as you get to bigger fractions. In that sense, maybe working with the cross product rule can be helpful. Normally we don't use the cross product rule. Normally we just simplify the fractions down. So oftentimes when you do a calculation, you have a fraction at the end, and the fraction can be expressed in larger terms than is necessary. You can see here, all these values here all represent the same thing. They all represent one half. This is the same value in simplest terms. And you must place all values in simplest terms in your final answer. Let's go over the process now of simplifying a fraction, or also known as reducing the fraction to lowest terms. Step number one, find a common factor between both the numerator and the denominator. Always try and find the largest one, but if you don't find it right off the bat, it's not a big deal. Then divide the top and the bottom by the same value. If you divide the top and the bottom by the same value, you don't change the value at all. You're just changing how that value is expressed. Then when we have our answer, we check to see if there's any more common factors that can be taken out. And then if there is, we repeat steps one through three again until we have no more common factors. This is the process of simplifying fractions. So let's try this one. We did some calculations and we got a final answer of eight over 24. And hopefully you can see right off the bat that this can be reduced. So let's reduce it down, eight over 24. We ask ourselves now, what is the largest whole number that can come out of both eight and out of 24? And if you see it right off the bat, it is eight. I can pull a common factor of eight out of the top and out of the bottom. As long as I do the same thing to the top and the bottom, I don't change the value at all. Now, we divide the top by eight, we get one. We divide the bottom by eight, we get three. So you can see here, this fraction, one third, is in lowest terms. But please remember, these numbers represent exactly the same value. I haven't changed the value of the fraction, I've only changed how I'm expressing that value. Perhaps you didn't see the eight right off the bat. Maybe you said, well, maybe see a four right off the bat. So no big deal, we can start with four, divide the top and the bottom by four, and we get two, and we get six. Now you look at it, and we do step number three, check to see if there's any more common factors that can be taken out. And you can see here, we can take a two out of the top and a two out of the bottom, in which case we get one third. Either case, you get the answer one third. It doesn't matter how many steps it takes you to get there. Please take your time and ask yourself, when you think you've simplified that question down to lowest terms, check again, see if there's a common factor. Let's try one more together. Write the fraction, 9 over 36 in simplest form. So 9 over 36. Let's just say I only see a 3 for now. So we can take a 3 out of the top and a 3 out of the bottom. I divide the same number from the top and the bottom. It does not change the value of this fraction at all. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 36 divided by 3 is 12. Now we look at this, and hopefully you can see this is not in simplest terms yet. We can now pull out an additional common factor from the top and the bottom of three. In this case here, one quarter. Simplest terms. Alternatively, maybe you saw right from the beginning that you could pull out a nine. And that is fine. You can do it in one step if you want. One over four. All that matters is you get the same answer in simplest terms. Now some practice problems. Give these a try. Try and write them in simplest terms without using your calculator, again. I want this to be an honest assessment of your abilities. If you're using a calculator, you're cheating, and in the end, you're not gonna learn the concepts, and your potentially your future career will be at stake because you don't have the strong mathematical skills that are required to work in a laboratory. So pause your video 
give these a try all the way to I. Again, an honest assessment of your ability. Give it a try now. I hope you gave them all a try. I've written down the answers here in green, and I'll take up a few of the problems that I think might be a challenge for you. So let's take up a couple of them right now. We'll take up maybe B, we'll take up H, and maybe we'll take up I. So what do we have here now? Minus five over 25. Common factor between the top and the bottom is five. We pull the five out, minus one, is what remains here. Minus 5 divided by 5 is minus 1 over 5. Can we take it down any lower? No. So please notice the negative sign comes along for the ride. It has to be the same value. If it's negative when we start, it has to be negative when we end. H now. What do we have here? We can use some knowledge we had gained earlier. Well, we could just do it the hard way. 2 times 2 times 2 over 2 times 2. And then you can see these cancel out and we're left with an answer of two. Alternatively, we can use our exponent laws. Remember, if we have two exponents with the same base and we're dividing them, we put it over the same base and then we subtract the exponents. In this case here, two to the one, so our final answer is two. So multiple ways to get the same answer. I guess another way you could do it, you could also say it's eight over four. Simplify that down, I can take a four out of the top, a four out of the bottom, and we get two over one, which is equal to two. Three different methods we can do to solve this one problem. Okay, let's do this last one now. Minus eight over four. There's no point doing minus eight over four. I have basically already done it. Here and here. The only difference is your answer would be in this case, minus two and not positive two. This course starts with the basics, the basic fundamentals of mathematics, and then we build on it. You must master those basic skills before we move on to the next step, because the next step we're going to start combining everything together. And that is why calculus can be so difficult for students, because with calculus, oftentimes you have to use every single mathematical concept that you've learned in the past. And if you are weak in any single one of those concepts, you will have a hard time doing calculus. So there are four questions here. I'd like you to pause your video and try these now on your own. I will take them all up when we're done. But give this one a try on your own, an honest assessment of whether or not you can do this. Let's take them up now. J, two to the exponent four times three to the five divided by three to the exponent two times eight. Let's just rearrange this. Remember one of those rules where for multiplying things together, it doesn't matter which one comes first. I can swap them around. Hopefully you can see this is one term. There is no addition sign or subtraction sign separating any of this. So I can combine this into one term. And you can see here, I have two exponents with the same base. I'm going to say this is equal to three, five minus two, and then I'll say times two to the four over eight. So all I did was bring this one up and combine it with the other one. Another way we can assess this, we can turn this into an exponent with a base of two. So we say three, five minus two is three, three cubed times the exponent four. And what is eight if we turned it into an exponent? Two times two times two, so two cubed. Once again, we can combine these together. Here we get three cubed times two, four minus three. We have two exponents, same base, we're dividing them, we subtract. We now have three cubed times two to the one. Now be careful. Some of you might make a mistake and say, oh, this is simple. This is just three, three plus one. Wrong. Can't do that. Why? These are not the same bases. So don't fall into that trap. Let's expand them out. Three cubed, three times three is nine, and nine times three is 27. 27 times two is what we have here, and in the end, 54 is the final answer. 
4 squared divided by 64. Let's start by squaring the 4. 4 times 4 is 16. We can then, let's see, I know a 4 can come out of both of them. Let's divide both of them by 4. This gives me 4 over 64 divided by 4 is 16. And if you notice, we can divide by another 4. 1 over 4. So you can see we're building on prior knowledge. We learned about exponents, and now we're learning about fractions, and we're learning about simplification. You need to understand all three of those concepts in order to solve these problems. Let's try the next one. Minus 36 over 6 squared. This is easy. Minus 36, 6 squared is 36. We can take a 36 out of the top and a 36 out of the bottom. Basically just cancels out. 1 over 1, so our answer here is going to be minus 1. A lot of stuff going on here. Let's look at some things we can combine here. It's one big term, all multiplication or division. Let's combine those together. We'll combine those together to simplify it quickly. So we have 4 on the top, 3 minus 2. We combine those together. We'll say multiplied by 5. 5 on the top is a 1, and on the bottom we have 2, so we're subtracting 2 from that. And lastly, times 6. And on the bottom here, let's write over 1. When those are gone, it's just over 1. Next up, we'll combine those together. 3 minus 2 is 1, and 1 minus 2 is minus 1, times 6 over 1. Tricky now, look at this. We have this value here is to a minus 1. So what I can do is I can bring that down to the bottom here and convert it to a positive number. This is 4 times 6, 5 to the positive 1. Gives me 24 over 5. This is an improper fraction. Let's convert this to a mixed number. We divide 5 into 24, goes in 4 times, 20, remainder 4. 4 is our whole number. Denominator was 5, and the remainder is 4. The answer here as a mixed number is 4 and 4 fifths. Last question here. You can see we have, it's one big term. The negative sign is on the 1 but it's inside brackets and we're multiplying it. So this is one big term. Let's combine together. Let's, let's move the 3 over 2 down to the bottom. You can see why this works. Let's look at that right now. So uh, we can say 2 to the 4, 2, 4, 8, 16. We'll bring the other one down to the bottom. I multiplied by, in this case here, minus 1 cubed. Uh, it's an odd number, so it'll be negative, but you can work through it yourself. Minus 1 times minus 1 is positive 1. Then positive 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. We bring the 3 squared down to the bottom, and notice it becomes 3 to the minus 2 times 4 squared here. It's going to be 16. You can see why that law works. If we're dividing it, we combine, we multiply. Let's work that out now. We have, well, 16 times minus 1 is minus 16 over 3, 3 minus 2. We're multiplying two values with the same base, so we add them up together. Plus negative 2 is just the same as saying minus 2. And then over here, 16. Now hopefully you can see we have the same value on the top and the bottom. They cancel out, but what you're really doing is you're dividing the top and the bottom by 16. In the end, remember that top value remains as 1, and over here, 3 to the 1. Finally, 3 to the 1 is just 3, so the answer to this whole thing is just minus 1 half. We always try and apply our mathematical concepts to something in the real world. The Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, they put out guidelines for what people should be eating in their diet. And you can see here the recommended daily allowance. This is how much of each you should be taking in. So total fat, 66 grams, saturated fats, 20 grams, so on and so forth. This is a recommendation. Unfortunately, most of us don't abide by this. Please note, one big reason why I have this is because of this right here, grams. We talk about grams. What is the short form for grams? The short form for grams is just G. That is it. Grams is not equal to GM. Please don't do that. Many of you who are educated elsewhere, for some reason you've been taught that GM represents grams. It does not. G represents grams. It is the standard unit. If we're talking about GM, this M represents meters. 
And GM is a value. If it was capital G, it would be gigameters. There is no lowercase g. So please don't do this. If you want to represent grams as a short form, just G, please. Items are sold on the market. And here in Canada, manufacturers must put on the side of their product the ingredients so people can make an informed decision about what they're ingesting. So we can try a little exercise here. We can build a fraction. So what fraction of your recommend daily allowance for sodium is in this power bar? So you can see here, these are all ingredients that would be located in what's called a power bar. It is, it is a nutritional bar. I've never had one. They look kind of gross. Maybe they're good. I don't know. Doesn't interest me at all. So let's build some fractions for this. I'll work on the first one with you and you can try the other ones and then I'll just write the answers down. So what fraction of your daily allowance for sodium is contained in a power bar? What do we have here now? So total allowance is what you should have on the bottom and the parts should be on the top. What do we have here now? Total allowance for sodium. Uh, sodium is right here. Total allowance is 2,400 milligrams. 2,400 milligrams. How much is contained in a power bar? 1,000 milligrams. Notice here, I have the same units on the top and the bottom. This will be extremely important. Because it's on there, this comes out because it's the same. If I had milligrams divided by milligrams, that just equals one. So that's one of the unique things about fractions is that the units can cancel out, not just the numbers. One trick way we can work with this, if you have values with lots of zeros, you can cancel out zeros, that zero cancels out, that zero cancels out, and we're left here with 10 over 24. Ask yourself, can we simplify that down anymore? Yes, we can. I can take a two out of the top and a two out of the bottom. In which case here, we have five over 12. So five twelfths of your daily allowance of sodium is taken in just by eating one power bar. So you should really look at the food you eat, almost half your daily intake of sodium from eating one item. Give these others a shot. I'll write down the answers here. And maybe you can, next time you go to the grocery store, you can look at what you're buying and think about that. In today's lecture, we examined equivalent fractions and we learned how to do cross product to see if there's a test for equivalence. But more importantly, we learned how to simplify fractions. Reminder, you must always express your fraction in simplest forms. Until next time.